Hi and welcome to the Gullet Knitting Circle. My name is Jana and I'm coming to you from Göttingen, a little city in the north of Germany where I study art history and musicology. Um, this is my little corner in the internet where I talk about my knitting and other crafty projects. Um, yeah, what I'm currently knitting on and things that I finished knitting and yeah. Um, so today I have um, quite a lot of projects to show you, quite some finished objects, um, but yeah, some, some whips as well. And well, what I'm really excited about to show you is my very first um, yarn dyeing attempts. Um, that yeah, I, I shared that in the last episode that I was gonna start um, looking into um, yarn dyeing. Um, so that I'm gonna share, and then I have another very special um, project that I've been working on, um, and that I'm gonna share as well. Um, it involves some knitting, but also some other crafts. Um, so yeah, let's start. Um, first, what I'm wearing. So this is um, a cardigan called the Throwback by Andrea Maori. And um, I've knitted this in the Merino yarn by Lang yarn. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I really like this kind of zigzag um, color work here. Um, well, it is quite small for me, um, so I, I should have made it in a, in a bigger size. And because it's quite small, also here around the shoulders, often the the it, it slips off my shoulders, so that's a bit annoying. Um, but otherwise, I really like this cardigan. And yeah, maybe I'm gonna knit it again in a in a big bit bigger of a size. And this is the um, classic ripped hat by Pearl Soho. Um, and this one I knitted in the Orb Merino, which is a New Zealand um, Merino yarn. And yeah, so I will start with the Finnish objects. And um, maybe I start with the biggest one, <laughs> which is the only finished jumper. I've been talking about this quite some episodes. It took me quite a while to finish it. Not really because it is such a long project, but mainly because I was knitting other things and I'm not necessarily such a stocky net person. I mean, from now and then I, I do enjoy stocky net knitting and especially when I'm reading because then I can read and <laughs> knit at the same time. I can only do that in stocking knit. Like I can't read and then do like a ribbing or something. Um, but yeah, in general, I think I'm more of a color work person. Um, like for example, when I'm watching a movie or something and then just do stocking knit is a bit too boring for me. And I often get tired of the project and do rather something with more interest, with more color work or something. Um, I mean, even though this was not only stocky net, um, I have here these leaf patterns going down. So this is, this is no pattern or anything, this is just something I made up. Um, yeah, so it's, it's not written down or anything. Um, and it has this leaf lace stitch pattern on the arms, going down the arms and then under the arms here and yeah. So it's knit in the Letloppi by Istex, it's the Icelandic yarn which is quite a rough yarn. I've been talking about this yarn a lot. Um, I don't know if you can see, but it has a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of hairs coming out. 
Um, but yeah, therefore it's very, um, very warm. And yeah, so I'm, I have a bit of a wool sensitivity. That's why I, c I, I wouldn't be able to wear this next to skin. Um, so I can only wear it when I'm wearing a thick layer underneath. Um, but yeah, then I'm really enjoying to wear it because yeah, it's just very warm. So I've knitted this um, top down. It started with the tubular um, cast on and then down with the raglan increases. Um, down to the body and I finished off with a ribbing and then I picked up the stitches for the sleeves knitted down the sleeves and then I have the same ribbing here so it's a fairly easy construction the only interesting thing is just the, these um, yeah, these leaves um, so yeah, but I'm really happy with this um, jumper actually because as I said I am quite a um, color work person and I love to work the color work but actually I'm not really a person who would necessarily wear a lot of the color um, like a normal daily um, day to day situations so um, yeah I, I quite like to just wear like a plain color, more darker colors like gray or something. Um, and that's why many of my color work jumpers, even though I really like them and I really enjoyed knitting them, often they, yeah, I, I don't wear them so much. That's why I thought, okay, now maybe I just do a very plain jumper in one color without color work. And yeah, that's that's how I came to this pattern. And yeah, it's, it's not a pattern, but to this construction. That, yeah, just something I made up. And so let's see if if I'm wearing this more often. Um, yeah. So another finished object. Um, I've showed this in the episode before. Um, there I had um, already knitted these two socks, the Sunday socks by Petit Knit and um, now I also finished the same socks, the Sunday socks in the grey. So this is knit in the um, Peruvian Highland wool by Phil Colana. Um, this is the tag. So, yeah, I wanted to show this to you because I think it's quite interesting. So I did wear these already sometimes um, and also for walking, which might have not been the best idea because it's pure wool. Um, so, um, and now they started felting a lot here on the heel. I don't know if you can see it. And, and the brown ones it's even um, it's even more to see like this it's very felted but actually I really like this because it makes them yeah, a bit more like slippers almost so um, yeah here you can hardly see the stitches I mean you can see them a little bit but it's very felted and it feels it feels very sturdy now actually so I'm hoping actually that this makes them a bit stronger and more sturdy so that maybe um, there won't be holes in them so soon and yeah maybe we can wear them for a bit longer um, and these socks I just really enjoyed knitting them I really enjoy the pattern. It's just very simple ripped socks with ribbing on top of them and stockinette down here with the heel flap and then turning the heel and gusset 
Oh yeah, and then just yeah, the toes decreases. Um, yeah, I was not really enjoying them to knit them, and I'm quite happy that um, they turned out so nice. And also this yarn is really really nice. It has these beautiful specks in them. Um, just very different color variations, and it makes it yeah, to a really nice um, color, both of them. And yeah, so I think this pattern is definitely something that I will knit more often in the future, especially for gift knitting or something, because this goes really fast. I knitted it on four millimeter needles, and those socks, I knitted them no time really. Um, so this would be a perfect gift for someone, like Christmas gift or something. So yeah, I will definitely knit them more often. And well then, um, I have another project that I made with the same yarn, the Peruvian Highland wool from by Fulcolana. And I made this from the leftovers of the um, brown or rust color socks, which is this little one. It's a little bunny. And this is what he looks like. It's Henry's Bunny by Sarah Elizabeth. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, and um, so yeah, I, I just knitted this in one morning and I really enjoyed it. So it started here, um, increasing until the head. It's knitted in one piece and then doing short row shaping to do the nose and then until here where the ears start and then um, you divide the stitches into two and then just knit the ears and then just those, those um, legs they are just knitted in a separate piece then and then I attach them to the body and yeah, knitted or embroidered the the nose and the the eyes. And yeah, I was really enjoying this. Although I didn't pay too much attention to the pattern. That's why something happened here on the back. Um where you see this is actually supposed to be in the middle of the back. So here, this is where the increase and decreases happened. Um, so that's not too great, but I don't mind it that much. And yeah, ideally it should be really in the middle of the, of the back. But yeah, I just, I didn't really pay too much attention to the pattern. I was just knitting it, yeah like knitting it quickly in one morning um, yeah, just so I have something a bit um, yeah Easter inspired and let's see what I'm gonna do with this one probably gift it or something and um, yeah so then I have another finished object I've got a few finished objects now. Um, well, this is actually finished already for quite some time, but because we were away the, the last week when um, I did the other episode and that's why I didn't have these projects with me. Um, so this is the other finished object. Um, these are the honeybee mitts by Nina Pommelenke. And if you've seen my other episode, you know that um, I knitted quite a lot of her mitts and mittens. Um, well, I knitted the Sayonach mittens with the fox on it already twice. And so now she released this pattern for the, the yeah, with a B on it and um, 
well I, I really really enjoy these um, patterns by her um, so it's, it's basically the same construction as the Sayana mitts but then with the different animal on top so yeah this is just well, the the bee was knit just in black and white, and then I embroidered with the duplicate stitch. I embroidered the yellow into it, and here on the other side, it just has these stripes and the thumb. So I'm really happy with those. I knitted them in a hundred percent cotton. Um, which is this one I just found this in in a local shop it's called Anna and Clara's 100% cotton which is supposed to be organic cotton and I quite like this I mean it's very different to have these kind of mittens in a cotton yarn compared to a wool yarn um, because they're not so, they don't fit that well. They're a bit more floppy, like they don't, yeah. They, they um, if you see here, they're quite loose here and it doesn't have this sturdiness of the real, or real, but of the um, yeah, animal fiber. But yeah, since I have this wool sensitivity for me it's just a lot more pleasant to wear um, cotton so next to skin that's why I decided to try that out with the cotton yarn and I'm actually quite happy so maybe next time I will just do them a bit smaller um, I mean there's just one size for these mittens but yeah next time I would then just modify it a bit and um, take some stitches out um, yeah but otherwise I'm really happy with this cotton yarn and yeah I think I'm definitely gonna knit more in cotton or other plant based fibers in the future um, and just try them out try different yarns and see what I like um, yeah I think that was all the finished objects <laughs> Well, I have one more, which is like half, because it's one sock. Um, but I'm going to sh show that later, when I come to the yarn dyeing part. Um, yeah, I'm quickly going to show some more... Oh, I do actually have another finished object, I just remembered. <laughs> um, which is here. <laughs> It is this pillow. Um, there's also no pattern or anything. Um, yeah, so well, the idea was to have some more um, pillows on our or cushions on our sofa, and so we bought like a big pile of those plain um, cushion insides. <laughs> without the cover and yeah now I'm gonna knit the the covers for it so um, these are just some leftover yarns that I had this is um, it's some yarn from the UK by the yarn collective and I hold it together with the um, silk mohair and then down here it's um, actually two sock yarns um, held together plus the silk mohair <laughs> and here I did a bit of a fade to go f from one yarn to the, to the other because I ran out of the, the red one and I knitted this in the round um, I just cast it on and then I knitted a bit and then, I, uh, then I've sewn this end and then I just knitted it knitted until it fit in here and then in the end I did the three needle bind off you can see it here um, to close it so yeah you're not really able to take it off anymore now unless you undo the 
one of the seams but I thought I can also just if I need to wash them wash them like this with the inside because it's no special inside it's just yeah I'm not even sure what it is but yeah those are the pillows and I'm currently working on another one which is even more scrappy because here I'm just taking all kind of let lopy leftovers that I'm having and I'm holding them together with the sigmo hair as well so I have this big bag here and I'm just yeah taking one after another and just going through all these let lopy scraps um, yeah just to tidy up a bit and also have nice pillows um, yeah that's that's the plan um, so I think there's this what I'm working on now and then I think two more that I'm I'm gonna knit and yeah let's see how many scraps I, c I use up and yeah let's see what other ideas I come up with for pillow patterns um, yeah well then I have um, one more whip here which is um, I showed this in the last episode which is by Mary Wallen it's the Muckle Row jumper um, I'm not much far further than in the last episode um, this is a bottom-up construction um, and yeah it has it has some color work down here on the body and on the sleeves and otherwise it's just plain stockinette um, and I'm knitting this in Jameson's Chetland Spindrift which is the recommended yarn and I really love this yarn because it has all these specks in it and I'm really enjoying this um, this project even though it's a, it's a very slow one it takes very long and um, but yeah I'm actually really enjoying it so I'm not rushing with it or anything just taking it really slow and knit one round here and one round there but yeah I'm not working so actively on it that's why it didn't really grow that much yet um, but yeah it will <laughs> in future it will um, so <laughs> let's come to the exciting part of of the podcast now um, well, which involves one um, half finished object which is one sock so um, I talked to you last episode I talked to you about the my plans of dyeing my own yarn and well I'm, I'm, I'm really not an expert in this at all <laughs> so I, I really don't know anything about dyeing yarn really and I also didn't want to do so much of research about it because yeah I just I don't know I just wanted to do something creative and just go for it really and try out different things so I didn't really do any research well a bit but just really the basics I didn't really research any techniques dyeing techniques or anything like that because I just wanted to try it out myself and um, so in on our, on our holidays um, I shared this in the last po podcast um, we've been to this yarn shop and they well they sold all the um, yarn dyeing supplies there and I got some quite some undyed yarn and um, well this this yarn shop in case you are in the Erzgebirge at some point um, it's called Wollschaf Wollmanufaktur so if you're in this area you should definitely check it out because I think this is a very nice shop it's it's not the biggest and um, yeah but I, I thought it was really nice and the this gains the undyed skeins they're fairly cheap so um, 
yeah i thought it's actually really worth it to dye the own yarn because it's much cheaper than buying dyed yarn um, and it's more fun <laughs> it's a lot more fun and so yeah i was really enjoying this process so um well from there dye i got two colors i got a dark blue and a dark red and this was the first skein i dyed with it this is what it looks like um yeah so i'm sure there's a lot of people who know a lot more about dyeing yarn than i do um but this is what i did i um well i put two knots into the yarn one in each end and then I hold, um, well I put one end in one container with the dark blue paint uh, dye and one end in the other container with the red dye. And um, well then I left it in there for a bit and afterwards I, I put it in the oven for one hour and yeah so that the color stays on it and well that's what i did and it seemed to have worked out really fine um afterwards i was washing it and everything and well it seemed to work <laughs> and this is what the sock looked like from when well, i did two skeins just the same so um yeah this is this is the same or almost the same skein just now um in a bowl and um, yeah, this is the sock I knitted with it. So I'm actually really happy with this. I think it looks, the, I think the colors look really cool because it has this striped effect. And yeah, I'm really happy with it. And I find it so exciting to then, um, well, see the skein and then imagine what the sock might look like because yeah I, I didn't really think it would look like this <laughs> so i mean yeah I, I really don't have any experience with dyeing yarn so but yeah i thought this was really cool to see this <laughs> process and um so i'm currently now knitting on the second sock this is how far i came um so just on the cuff and well this is just my basic go-to sock pattern i guess it's not even a pattern it's just my personal recipe for knitting socks it's just um just ribbing on the cuff and then with the heel flap it's a reinforced heel flap with um yeah slip stitches and then turning the heel doing the gusset decrease and then just stocking it all the way into the toes and then toe decreases and in the end I did the Kitchener stitch to close them. That's just how I do my socks and um, yeah so now I have some more yarn. Um, well there's these two, yeah, the, these or oh, these four, <laughs> I um, I dyed in the same colors, just using different um, different methods. I mean, methods if you can call it like that. It's just something I made up, <laughs> and I'm also not the best in winding up the skeins, but this is what another one looks like. And this is also the same dark blue and then I just in this one I just made some little knots so that's where these white specks come from and I'm imagining this to look quite nice then later in socks so I'm mainly um, dyeing sock yarn so far and this is all sock yarn um, because in socks is the good thing that you can just um, 
already have a finished object with one skein. <laughs> That's why I like socks in this context. Well, this is one um, skein that is thicker, which is a DK weight. And this is the only skein that is thicker. The other ones are all fingering. And with this one, to be honest, I can't really tell anymore what I did. I just yeah tried all kinds of things. I put it first into this and then into the other die and then I was putting knots here and there and then um yeah just trying out different things. Um but well I'm quite happy with it. I have no idea how this will look like knitted up, but so far I'm really happy with it. So with this I might actually my hat or something that might be quite nice and then um, well because of my um, wool sensitivity and also because it's gonna be summer here soon um, I got this viscose yarn which is a um, plant-based um, yarn and this is what they both look like so this is very very thin that's why I dyed two the same with the intention of holding them together um, well in the viscose yarn it didn't work so well um, first it was really dark blue but then um, most of it washed out so I don't really know what I did wrong maybe if there's some yarn dyeing expert who knows about viscose yarn could tell me <laughs> and leave a comment but yeah I'm, I think they're still nice um, especially for summer it might be nice and yeah, I'm thinking to knit some kind of a summer top with those two and yeah let's see how that goes <laughs> I mean here's not so much of a fade or anything is yeah almost almost plain <laughs> I mean some points it's, it's stronger the color and others not so but yeah let's see how it looks like and well then I read this one blog post because then I did do a bit of research on dyeing yarn and um, I've seen that there was this one person who dyed yarn using the the color that we use to dye Easter eggs with. So I don't really know if this is a thing in other countries too, but here in Germany it's a big tradition and it's a big thing to to dye the eggs, the Easter eggs in all kind of colors. I guess in other countries they do that too. But yeah. <laughs> I've always just seen it here and then they sell these these colors so they either sell those kind of a tablets that you resolve in water and a bit of a vinegar um, and sometimes they also have the liquid um, colors so I use the, the the solid ones the tablets and I resolve them in water put a bit of vinegar and well then put my yarn in so this is a very colorful one that I did it looks like this and this is all the different um, the different colors that were in one of these packages so there's a, some kind of a red then yellow blue green and orange um, and again I have no idea how this is going to look like um, when it's knitted it's, it's also sock yarn so we'll make some socks with this um, and I'm really excited to see how it looks like because yeah, I have really no idea <laughs> I did try to do it that there would be kind of a fade going from one color to another and not like in, in these socks where it's more speckled and just all the colors at once, kind of. 
Um, so I was trying to do a bit more going from one color to another color. But I don't know if it's gonna work out. Um, but I'm really excited about this one. I think this is the one I'm most excited about just because there's so many colors in it. And um, then these Easter egg colors, I mixed them with the red that I had already. And I did this kind of color. So it has mostly the dark red, which is like kind of a burgundy red. And then it has those specks in here with yellow and orange. And yeah. I really like this one actually. I love these colors. And this one I'm also really excited about to make some socks. And yeah. Well, actually, I'm excited about all of them <laughs> because, yeah, again, I can't really imagine what they look like. <laughs> and this is the last one. This one I also really like. So this is um, well, the, this this blue is the Easter egg blue, and this blue is the one that I had already, which is specifically for the um, yarn. And then there's just a bit of green in between. Um, yeah. Also here I was mainly um, working just with knots in the yarn. When I was putting them into the dye, I would put knots so that the the dye wouldn't go into those places. And yeah, those are my my dyeing attempts, yarn dyeing attempts. And what? Well, I think that this is something I would really like to continue and try out new things, especially the natural dyeing, because yeah, I guess these dyes are really not the greatest um, for the environment and everything, also to have them on the fingers and everything, so I had to be really careful to wear gloves and um, so yeah, because of that I would just really really like to also try natural things. Um, last year I actually did this for dyeing my Easter eggs. Um, I used um, uh, what did I do? spinach, I used um, onion skin and blueberries and um, yeah different things. And it actually worked out really well. Some worked better than others and I didn't really note down which did and which didn't. But yeah, so to try this on the yarn would be something that I'm very interested in. And um, yeah, I, I will definitely keep on doing this. <laughs> Especially also because it's much cheaper. And um, yeah. <laughs> So that that's something that I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to do more and to learn more about it by doing it. <laughs> I think I'm definitely more the person who learns things through doing it than reading about it and then doing it. Um, that always puts me off, that's why I then sometimes don't try new things because I think I have to first get into the topic and learn about it. Um, but yeah, this time I decided I would just do it like this and just try it. <laughs> so, um, well, then we come to the last project, which is also actually a finished object, but I wanted to, to talk about it on, in the end because this is just, it's a bit off topic, but it still has to do something to do with knitting. So you can actually see it here on there, <laughs> um, which is, um, well in German we call it Wurmkiste, which is a box for worms. And um, well this is something I'm really excited about. <laughs> um, well a friend of mine, she has this already for a long time. And it is basically a compost box with worms inside. 
and they digest the compost and then they make nice soil that you can use for plants and also produce this so-called worm tea <laughs> which is a really good fertilizer, natural fertilizer for plants and um, yeah so my friend said her plants they they really they go crazy with these fertilizers and it works really well for her um, so yeah we've been looking into this for quite some time um, and there is this company and you can order those boxes from this company um, but yeah those are very expensive so we thought okay why not just do it ourselves and um, so we made this box ourselves. So it's basically yeah, just a big wooden box. And then um, inside there goes, there goes one of those plastic baskets or boxes. Um, and that's where all the, the compost goes, like kitchen waste. Um, so for example, onion skin or carrot or something like this. And then um, they go, also the, the worms, they go there as well. And um, well then they, they digest these scraps and then the soil goes down and it, it collects there under this um, basket. And then every six months or so you can take out this basket and collect the soil use it for your plants and yeah it's just a it's it's just a really good and natural way to use up the waste the kitchen scraps and yeah also have a really good natural fertilizer um yeah and then under this um soil there's a layer like a membrane um, where the, all the water goes through because this has to be quite quite moist because the, the worms they, they like you know to have it moist um, otherwise they dry out um, so and then this moist then collects and drops down into another basket that is in the bottom and yeah that's then the, the liquid fertilizer that you can also use for the plants and yeah, it's really good for the plants too. And yeah, so we've made this box. And the idea of this company is, and then we kind of <laughs> took this idea, um, that because those, those compost boxes, they do exist a lot in gardens, and many people have those things in the garden. But the idea here is to um, have a box like this in inside your flat like f especially for people who don't necessarily have a garden and um, yeah who just want some good soil for their indoor plants and um, so the idea is that this box is not just a big box in the middle of the room that is just I don't know collecting dust but um, to actually also integrate it into the room furniture so that then on top of this box there is like a cushion and you can actually sit on it and it's like a little stool and um, yeah you can can use it um, to, to sit on it and so for this I I did knit uh, yeah just a just a square and like a flat square and then um, we put some like some padding on top of the lid and then with velcro we put the the knitted fabric on top of on, on top of the lid so now people can actually sit on it and yeah we put it next to our sofa and it just looks like it's yeah a new furniture piece and people wouldn't necessarily think that there's actually a lot of worms living inside <laughs> But yeah, this is something I'm really excited about, especially because we also um, yeah started planting some some vegetables and things and herbs 
um, which we want to put outside in those boxes. So we're having now little tomato plants and radish and um, yeah, different herbs too. And yeah, for these plants it's, it's going to be really nice to have the, the good fertilizer and have the good fo soil. And yeah, so it, it does feel like having pets now too. <laughs> Because yeah, one has to feed them, and yeah, even though they're very easygoing pets, and <laughs> you don't necessarily see them so often, it still feels like yeah, like they're now part of of our home, and um, yeah, I'm really excited about them. Um, so yeah, if you like, if this is something that interests you, I can keep you updated about this project and see how. How things will go with our new works. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is all the projects I wanted to share about today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this little chat and that you have found some nice time to maybe work on on a project yourself. And yeah, if you like, you can leave a comment and tell me what you're knitting on. Um, yeah, because in the end I would really like to have this as a space to inspire each other rather than me just talking about my projects. And um, yeah, I hope that your knitting is bringing you lots of joy and comfort. <laughs> and yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you soon in the next episode. And until that, stay well. Keep knitting and I will see you soon. Bye.